Wait, Ron, Ron. Does Chris Keith know you exist yet? No, but he senses me. Have you tried dropping a pencil in front of him like I taught you? I think that's too adult. No, it's only adults if you pick it up with no hands. I can pick up a pencil with one foot and then sharpen it with the other. And you don't have a boyfriend? I know, right? I think you need to try internet dating. I don't know. My sister had a really bad experience. They matched her up with, like, a 300-pound guy. Why would an internet dating site hook her up with a guy that's so much smaller than her? Why does Ronald's dad look so familiar? He sells fancy houses to rich people. His face is on billboards and park benches all over town. He's Million Dollar Mike? I've sat on his face a bunch of times. I left my violin inside. But look, I got up in this cute bag. Took candy camps all weekend away and felt bad. Hey girls, hit me with a quick one. Disregard the lollipop, it's an oral fixation. Wow. You must be Ronan's daddy. I've heard so much about you, but nothing about how handsome you are in person. <laughs> and you must be Ronan's teacher, Miss... Uh... Miss Davis, but it's uh, Meredith to you. Meredith? Oh, she braids your hair. I was under the impression that you were a student. And I'm under the impression you're taking me to dinner Monday. I'm going to take you out to dinner Monday. I mean, I hardly know you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I would love to. Well, that would, uh, that would be fun. Uh, just a heads up, since the divorce, Bronwyn has to approve of any girl that I date. You know, she's a daddy's girl, so that's one rule I can't break, no matter how fast you get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. Well, don't worry. Bronwyn and I are in safety patrol together, and we're very good friends. I mean, if I had to have a sister and she had to be brunette, I would want it to be Bronwyn. We're that close. Great. Well, if she says yes, you can get my number off of any billboard or park bench. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm actually not kidding. You can't get my number off of any billboard or uh. park bench, so I'll just <laughs> keep my fingers crossed. Bye, Meredith. Bye, Ruth. <laughs> I'll see you on Monday, and I'll see you on Monday night. <laughs> Here, I know how to use it. Good news, everyone. The superintendent has just informed me that it is time for our yearly locker inspection. I'm not in love with this responsibility, but since my divorce, I'm trying to remain positive. Trying to see that glass is half full, which it barely is, as my roommate Ron finishes my sodas when I doze off. But it's all good. It's all good. A grown man with a roommate is so awesome. Okay. So I've been too nervous to pull the trigger on internet dating, but then Meredith inspired me. So I just asked my friends at the Ferret Club for a good site, and they suggested just somebody.org. And I, I filled in my name and sex, and I'm done. That's all the information you need to find a match? Yeah, <laughs> just somebody doesn't ask a lot of questions. And they don't match so much as they locate others. You know, I guess that's their tagline anyway. So my first date is tomorrow night, and he is described as... Male. Oh. Ooh, I would never date online. It's too dangerous. One minute you're meeting a guy for you peel him shrimp, and the next thing you know you're wrapped up in jumper cables trying to open a car trunk from the inside. Oh, I'm just saying you should write your contact info on your arm. That way the police will be able to quickly identify your body. Okay, oh, Kim, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with your locker as it's already open. Sure, but be careful opening it because I keep a lot of in the teacher's lounge. You are a student teacher. Your locker should be with the students. But I'm an adult. It's okay. I'm used to messes. My roommate Ron is a hoarder. So I will just consider this locker more than half full because it's all good. And it's all good. Oh, Ron, Ron. I have huge news. What is the greatest thing that you could ever possibly imagine happening in your whole life and then times it by three? I am considering dating your dad. I know. Let it sink in, get over the shock, and then hug me. Not a hugger. I get it. So when I spoke to your dad, he said that I would need your approval to date him, which is hilarious, because <laughs> obviously, as best EFFs, I already know your answer. It's a formality thing. Sorry, but it would be weird having my teacher date my dad. But I'm your friend before I'm your teacher. And who taught you how to do that pencil trick? And I was even going to come to your stupid music thing on Friday, pending my availability. I think it would be better if you don't date my dad. That's so weird. For a second, I thought she said, don't date her dad. <laughs> hey, Irene, what's up? Uh, I need to 
ginger help. I finally filled out my online dating profile, and uh, I have my first date tomorrow at lunch. His profile name is TV Watcher 359. Apparently, I was not a match with TV Watcher 1 through 358. But you don't seem too excited. Well, Jeannie told me that online dating is dangerous, and that I should go to Sears and get my portrait done, so that I have a cute picture for the in memoriam section of next year's yearbook. You know what? She's just being dramatic. Okay, but maybe you could just teach me some self-defense moves just in case. You know, I do a little online dating, right? And I haven't murdered or tried to murder once. You just gotta stay alert and be aware of your surroundings. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. No problem. All right. You know what, buddy? Second thought? Maybe I'll tag along just to be extra safe. Good idea. Bronwyn, here's the thing that I love about our friendship. We don't just have problems, we fix problems. And me being your teacher is a fixable problem. Pencil Carl. Just a sec, I'm trying to loosen up this towel, which is petrified, so it'll fit in the garbage. <laughs> All part of the JLB. Now, what can I do you for? I was thinking that Bronwyn over here might be limited in sixth grade, and it might be a good idea to promote her to seventh. She gets straight A's. She knows more than everyone in the class, <laughs> even more than me sometimes. I mean, I know more than her, like she's stupid compared to me, but smart for her class. So what do you say? Well, uh, it doesn't happen that often, but I guess I could look into it. That would be so great. taken. I'm feeling something tropical. I want to stay in my grade with my friends. I'll promote your friends. You're not understanding. I am understanding. I am bending over backwards to date your dad and not in the fun way. I'll explain it later. Can you think for one second how fun it would be for us if I dated your dad? We could be even better besties. What I want is for you not to date my dad. But why not? You know me. I don't want you to date him because I know you. I know you date guys for their money and I know that's why you're into my dad. Come on. We're friends. Then if we're really friends, you respect my decision even if you don't like it. I'm so proud of Irene for going on this date. I just can't believe a good friend would deny me dating her dad. Does Roman really think if I dated him that I wouldn't be thinking about her too? That I'm that self-centered? Does this seem weird that Irene's date hasn't shown up yet? I mean, it's, he's like 30 minutes late. I'm not self-centered. If anything, I'm other people-centered. <laughs> Hey. hey, I mean, I, I hate to say this, but TV Watcher 359 may not be coming. Oh, but I planned all these great conversation topics of things we have in common. Internet access, the ability to speak English. Ah. Okay. But, um, hey, I, I would love to eat with you. You know, just the two of us, having a nice lunch outside. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to teach you about Indians. When the Americans first came to the States, the Indians were living there. And the two groups quickly became best friends. But the Indians wanted to keep all of the land to themselves. And yes, maybe the land was rich in nutrients. But that didn't have to be the only reason the Americans wanted the land. And the Indians really should have known that. Being besties. But instead, they just flat out betrayed the gentle, kind, and super hot Americans. Now, has um, anyone learned? From the Indians' mistakes? And the Indians were right. The Americans were wrong. <laughs> well, I think the history books would disagree with you on that. Have you even read the history books? I am the history books. And you've left me no choice. When I was cleaning yesterday, I found this very personal note from you, Bronwyn. Do you uh, want me to read it? I love it. You sure? Dead sure. Okay. It is to Chris Keith. <laughs> and it says... Hi, Chris. It's Bronwyn. I have a crush on you. Want to go out on a date? Gotta go. I'm having my period. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't remember writing the note on the back of a receipt for Spanx. <laughs> But it ended up being pretty fun, actually. I talked about fantasy novels, and Joel talked about fantasy football. Ironically, they both have a character named Ladarius. It was cool. It was like, as soon as I said my date wasn't going to show up, he asked me to have lunch with him. Maybe he's into you. Kim! Oh. Oh, how did you leave things? 
Since at the end of lunch. Well, he put the leftover food in his baseball cap and then he said, let's hang out again. <laughs> he is definitely into you. Friends never want to hang out again. Right? Well, Joel's just lucky that my real date didn't show up. Was he lucky? Or did he ask you out pretending to be somebody else? Maybe he, you've got mail to you. You've got mail me? He, you've got mail to you. I got you got mail? You got you got mail. Got to be kidding me. Whose locker is this? I'm getting Chinese food juice all over my pants. Uh, I have a tied stick in my moped. I'm fine, Kim. Do I need just a little bit of encouragement? Absolutely, this job is thankless. But I own it. Unlike my apartment, which is Ron's. Oh, oh. oh. For the love of God, I have a master's degree. Hi. Thank you so much. Good luck with the test on Friday. Hi. Oh, hold up a little bit. There you go. <laughs> it's a buyer's market. The APR has never been lower. Carpenter has his hammer. I have magnets with my face on them. So, <laughs> so I, I got your message, and I'm thrilled that you called, but I'm hoping everything's okay. Well. That depends. It's about my number one student, Bronwyn. Can I get you anything? A glass of wine? Scotch? Do you keep alcohol here in the classroom? Of course not. Mike, I asked you here today because I'm very concerned about Bronwyn. As you know, I, I care very much for her. And I'm worried that she has some pretty serious issues with you finding love. I'm so sorry. I really want to enjoy this, but your heel is digging into my thigh. Oh. Hi. But I understand where she's coming from. If I were her, I would want to keep you all to myself, too. I would just want to pull you in, hold you tight, turn your sideburns, and never let you go. But it's not healthy. She's the kid. You're the dad. Maybe you're right. Mm -hmm. you know, I should turn my sideburns, but then I'd have to change the, the benches and the magnets, and that sure. would be a big hassle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, sweetheart. Hi. What are you doing here, Meredith? Well, I'm just hanging with your dad. Honey, uh, Meredith really put things in perspective. I think we both need to be more open with how daddy dates. Mm, that's a good point. Well, you made it. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so good for us, because then I can teach you after school, too. Like, I never finished that lesson about the Indians. When the Indians told the Americans they couldn't have any of their land, the Americans took the land anyway. So get in here, you. Come on, Marty, we want to take you for ice cream. Come on. Got it. TV Watcher 359. No. It's OK. You, you got mailed me, and I think it's cute. I, I wish I could take credit. It makes me feel so much better. You know, I haven't been in a relationship since I got dumped at an Earth, Wind, and Fire reunion concert. Actually, it was just fire because Earth and Wind got in a fender bender on the way to the fair. But I am so happy that it was you and that I didn't get stood up again. Guilty. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, all the way, 100%. Looking for sex online, you know? I get it. I know I'm your type. Smart, skinny, slightest hint of spinal curvature, and I love curves. And don't get me wrong, I mean, we would be fierce lovers. But we've been friends a long time, Joel, and I think it would be a mistake to ruin it. Plus, I have a very strict don't poop where you eat policy. I learned that from my parents. This is tough, but I understand. Hey, how'd you come up with the name TV Watcher 359 anyway? Great question. Um, I, because I have a TV, and I watch it, you know? And then, um, my, I was born on March 59th. I know it's weird that your teacher is dating your dad, but you're more mature than a lot of adults I know. So, we're gonna get through this, and we're gonna be even better friends in the end. Also, you're so pretty and skinny. Are you okay? If anybody can date my dad, I guess I'm glad to. Thank you. <laughs> me too. Learn from me, Lily. It is going so well. We're going away for the weekend, staying at a five-star resort on the water. 
Wait, you guys are going away this weekend? Yeah, Friday after school. You want me to Nikki some soap? This is why Brahma didn't want you to date her dad. He's gonna miss our violin recital like he misses everything. That's why Brahma has so much nice stuff. He buys her things instead of showing up. And in a bad way? Yes, she wants him there. That's why she doesn't approve of anybody dating her dad. She barely sees him as it is. But in a yes, bad way? Yes, in a bad way. Okay. Dear Principal Carl, you are an amazing leader. I appreciate your dedication, and I hope I can be just like you when I get out of school. Oh boy, that's a bad punch there. Carl Maurice Gaines, you are appreciated. <laughs> Email from TV Watcher 359. Oh, oh, okay. You so you got my email. Um, what? Did I... Don't worry, it's from the real one. Yeah, apparently he got stuck on a business trip. But thank you for being so nice. No problem. Well, we we rescheduled the date. Cool. Yeah, I just gotta wire him some money so that he can get back to America. Wait, stop! D don't do that. <laughs> Hey, hey, I uh, brought you a vintage bottle of champagne and some pencils so you can show me that trick you were talking about. Yes. <laughs> How about after the recital? <sighs> well, we gotta head to the hotel. Traffic's gonna be bad. I don't wanna miss the uh, couple's massage that I booked before our 10 course tasting menu. It's Peter friendly, but barely. Oh, uh, sounds so good. But you know, I wouldn't mind skipping the massage for Brahman's recital. So why don't we just go to the recital? Then we'll go to the hotel. I'll be okay with only eight courses for dinner. Oh, I left her a pair of diamond earrings on her chair, so she's cool. She's not gonna care. Of course she's gonna care. Wait, how many carrots were the earrings? Uh, don't tell me. I don't want to know. She wants you there. Relax. There's gonna be plenty of recitals. Yeah, but she's been practicing like crazy for this recital. She thought you were gonna be there. I don't want to be the reason that you're not. You should be there. I thought we had a connection, but you're starting to sound an awful lot like my uh, ex-wife. <laughs> well, maybe she was right. You know, I teach here, so I see a lot of duds, and Bronwyn is not one of them. Which is why... I am not gonna go away with you this weekend. And, um... And I'm not gonna date you either. And frankly, you shouldn't be dating anybody until you figure out how to make Bronwyn your number one top priority, because there's nothing more important. Roman, come get this stuff off of this American sports car. Roman, don't scratch it. Hi. Just wanted to let you know I dumped your dad. What? He's not rich enough for me. He has way too much baggage. That baggage being you. Thanks. Guys, stop talking to me. We have a concert. Go get him, girls. It's my girlfriend and violin out there. It's at Fire's Market right now. Hey, what are you doing here? Looking for some rich dads to shake down? No, oh, I'm just here supporting the students I love in their artistic endeavors. They suck. I'm going out for a smoke.